In this video, we're gonna learn how to design this 3D printable Mario block from start to finish. This is a fun and simple design to create and 3D print. Additionally, with this design, it's a fun, cute, and retro 3D print that anyone can design. And the best part about this design is that it takes less than one hour to print, less than 15 minutes to design, and it's easy for any beginner to design and 3D print. So with that said, let's go ahead and jump into our software and start designing. All right, so to get started with this design, the first thing we wanna do here is open up a blank new canvas with infusion from here let's hover over to the left hand side click on create create sketch then select the bottom plane here from here what we need to do is to create a center rectangle to do that click on create rectangle center rectangle from the origin drag this out I'm gonna set the value here to 50 pressing tab on my keyboard and selecting 50 press enter from here, let's go ahead and reorient our screen. Click on finish sketch, then press E on your keyboard and drag this up by around 50 millimeters. Make sure your distance is set to 50, operation set to new body and press okay. The next thing we need to do here is to add a chamfer all around our cube here. To do that, press S, type in chamfer, and select the menu icon here. From here, let's go ahead and select each and every single edge on this cube. And once you have all edges selected, I'm gonna chamfer this in by around, let's just say 2.5 millimeters. Press okay. The next thing we need to do is to create the triangle that sits on the center. But before we do that, we need to create some sort of shell or opening on the inside. Now this is completely optional, even more so if you plan on putting stuff in here, maybe like uh, pencils or any other miscellaneous items. So if you care about that, I'm gonna show you how to do that. So to do that, press S, type in shell, select the top, and I'm gonna shell this in by around two millimeters. Then we can go ahead and turn off our sketch on the left-hand side, turn off sketch one. From here, let's go ahead and add an image, clicking on the canvas menu here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and drop the resources for the question mark down below underneath in the description. Once you have your image downloaded, go ahead and import it into Fusion, and it should look something like this. Once that's done, press okay. Now, in order to create this design, what we need to do is to sketch out the triangle that wraps around the piece or the block on our square here. So to do that, we're gonna create another sketch by clicking on create sketch, then select the front face here. Let's go ahead and zoom in. Then if we're to take a look at this design, you can see that most of this design is pretty much just made up of like lines. So you have a line here, you have a line on the right, you have a line at the bottom, you have a line right here. You know, most of it is just a line. Now I tried looking for the font online for this question mark, I could not find it. So I think it would be just best to just kind of sketch everything out and don't worry, it's fairly easy to do. Let's use the line command here on the left-hand side. Then start from the bottom left, just dragging this up to the right, all the way to the right, back down, and take your time and zoom in wherever needed. Now I have the first piece to my question mark at the very top. Let's create another one for the bottom. Click on two point rectangle from the bottom to the right. And there's our design. Now with that, we need to go ahead and set up some constraints. The first thing I want to do here is make sure that this edge to this edge here lines up. I'm going to use the horizontal vertical constraint, select this point to this point, and this point to this point. I want to make sure that every single line that I have here is parallel to each other. To do that, I'm going to use the parallel constraints here in the top middle section of the screen, and just start with kind of the opposite line here, line here, this one to this one, this one to this one, and just finding any er areas where I can set up some, uh, make them parallel. Now 
Additionally, if you're not happy with the overall look, you can also set up some dimensions here by pressing D on your keyboard. And as you can see, this line here kind of has like a different angle compared to the one on the left. So I'm gonna go ahead and set up some dimensions for this. Pressing D on my keyboard and then selecting both of these lines. I'm gonna make this just a bit smaller. I'd say 125. Or maybe in this case, just drag this down. Pull this out. And in this case, I'm just going to make sure, maybe make it a little bit smaller. Start right here. There we go. So 130. And the exact same thing for the left-hand side. From here, let's go ahead and create a couple of circles using the cir center diameter circle. Starting from the top, dragging it out. I'm gonna set this value to five millimeters and making sure I set up constraints here. So I'm gonna press D on my keyboard, select the center to the edge. I'm gonna set this to 4.5. Same thing from left to right, 4.5. I'm keep creating another one here on the right hand side, center diameter a circle dragging it out 4.5 pressing d oh excuse me this is actually a five and just repeating the exact same thing here go ahead and repeat the exact same thing for the bottom once you have your sketch Go ahead and click on finish sketch. Then I'm gonna go ahead and take all of these profiles that we just made, select again. Then pressing E on our keyboard and drag this in by around negative 0.5. Now this is just small enough where your 3D printer can print this. And I'm gonna turn off my canvas, but at the same time, not making the overhangs too steep and giving us some sort of weird effect when we do try to print it. So now that you have your question mark, the last thing we need to do here is to basically create some sort of offset so we create some sort of gap. So to do that, let's go ahead and turn on sketch two, press O on our keyboard, then select the front face here. We're gonna go ahead and take this profile, offset this in by let's just say 0.16 and repeat the exact same thing for the bottom. 0.16. From here, selecting this profile to this profile, press E. And now what we've essentially done is created some sort of clearance or gap here, basically allowing us to push in this question mark, kind of embedding it into our design, but not affecting the overall look. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish sketch, select this profile and this profile, Press E and I'm gonna offset this by, or extrude this by, let's just say 1.6. Press new body. I'm gonna go ahead and turn off my sketch too. Now keep in mind, this here is extruded 1.6 from this face. Now we do have a extrude going in about negative 0.5. So realistically around 1.2 is going to be sticking out from our design. So if it's 1.6 minus 0.5, that means actually 1.1 is going to be sticking out. So it's going to be a little less thick than that. If you want it to protrude in just a bit, you can go ahead and double click on the extrude here. Set the direction to two sides. And then you can add that negative 0.5 going in. And it should not affect your design. The next thing we need to do 
is to circular pattern this all around our design. We want to add the features that we add, more so the circles and the question mark. To do that, press S on your keyboard, type in circular pattern, then selecting the last two features in your timeline, selecting the axis, it's going to be the Z axis, which is this dark blue line here in the center. Let's go ahead and set the quantity to four and press OK. Now, as you can see on screen, when we use the circular pattern feature with Infusion, we set the compute type to optimize, which did not actually duplicate the question mark going all around our design. You can change this to, let's just say, adjust, select OK, and now you have the question mark on screen. Now, in my personal opinion, it doesn't really matter which one you choose. The main reason for this is because even without it, you realistically only need to export the cube and the question mark, which is these two pieces here. You can duplicate that within your slicer, so it's not too much of a big deal. But if you prefer to see all the bodies within your browser, then you can just change the compute type. From here, I'm going to leave this as is. Press A on the keyboard. Then let's go ahead and add some color to this. I'm going to search for yellow and then add in a plastic yellow. Then I'm going to search for white. And I'm going to search in and add a matte plastic white. Press close. From here, we're pretty much done with our design. Go ahead and save this. And let's also go ahead and export this to our slicer. To do that, right click on unsaved, save as mesh, then press OK. So here we have our design within Bamboo Studio. I'm going to go ahead and right click on this, click on split, then split to objects. Now, as you can see, we have the cube and the question mark and the tiny square. Let's go ahead and reorient this, kind of set this up to be 3D printed. And you can just duplicate this to get more out of the same set. Let's go ahead and add some color. And there you have it. There you have your 3D printable Mario block inside Bamboo Studio. Let's go ahead and slice this. And as you can see, it's going to take us about one hour to 3D print with less than 50 grams of filament. And this is a pretty small design, so you can feel free to scale this up as much as you like in order to fit in whatever you're trying to accomplish. So let's go ahead and print this out and see how it turned out. With that said, that pretty much wraps up today's tutorial. By now, I should have a total of nine pieces printed out. I'm using yellow for the block and plain white for the question mark. From here, you can go ahead and use glue to kind of attach these pieces together. And once the glue has settled, you have a final design which you can use for your own personal use or even put this on a wall or even hang it up on your shelf. With that said, if you guys enjoyed today's tutorial and want to get access to more guides, tutorials, and resources specifically for 3D printing, check out 3D Printing School down below in the description. This is an online community giving you access to more courses, guides, resources, and classes in addition to a live community. So if you ever get stuck, have questions or need help, either I myself or someone else in the community will be able to help you get the answers that you're looking for. In addition, we have tons of members going through our courses and programs, getting amazing results and even helping people turn their 3D printed designs into sellable products. So if you're interested in checking that out, you can sign up with the link down below in the description or check out 3dprintingschool.com slash join. You can sign up from there and for a limited time, you can get access to the community and all the resources available to members in there. But with that said, thank you so much for watching and and I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care.